Welcome back Technobies. My name is Don. Today we'll be discussing our build notes from our budget NAS. Let's go. Tech newbies. Before selecting the parts, I had to choose which NAS OS I will use. Two of the most popular choices were free NAS and Android. Let's look at the features of each of these OS. For FreeNAS, enterprise-ready file system. FreeNAS uses the CFS file system. The CFS data resiliency is top-notch. Lawrence Systems even tried to deliberately damage their test system to see if data can still be recovered. I'll post a link of the video in the description below. Snapshots. This feature allows you to take snapshots of the entire file system at any time. Access files as they were when the snapshot was made. Replication allows you to send snapshots over the network to another system for true off-site disaster recovery. Plugins allows you to add third-party software for added functionality of your NAS. Simplified management. Free NAS management is done via the web UI, meaning command line knowledge is not necessary. Best of all, as the name implies, free NAS is free. The for Android Parity Protected Array. Depending on your configuration, if one or two of your disks fail, you can still recover your data. Just swap out the damaged disks, rebuild, and you are good to go. Cache. This allows you to use SSD or M.2 drives as cache drives for faster data transfer across your network. Docker containers. This allows you to run applications on their separated, isolated environments. Unlike virtual machines, containers do not require hardware emulation, which eliminates overhead, hardware requirements, and provides near bare metal performance. Virtual machines. If you need to run virtual machines, you can do so in Unraid. Simplified management. Like FreeNAS, Unraid also makes use of a web UI for easy management, even by beginners. Unlike FreeNAS though, the license for Android is not free. License costs around 59 to 129 US dollars, depending on the number of storage device you plan to use. And because of this, I chose FreeNAS as my NAS OS. Well, initially at least. We'll get back on this later. For hard disks, when it comes to NAS, there are only two brands that comes to mind, at least for me, because these are the most common and easy to get locally. Western Digital Red and Seagate Iron Wolf. Being a Western Digital user since the Raptor days, I never had any problems with this brand, from green, blue, and Raptor models. So why change now? Hence, I chose Western Digital Red. While I was waiting for the other parts to arrive, I came across an alarming article. Alarming for me because I have already purchased my hard disk drives without knowing about this issue. It has something to do with the recording technology used in some of today's hard disks. There are two recording methods used in hard disks. CMR or conventional magnetic recording, which is also known as the parallel magnetic recording and SMR or shingled magnetic recording. Hard disks have data platters. These platters are composed of tracks where data is written or read. For illustration's sake, let's say that the tracks are vertical. In a CMR hard disk, data is written per track. New data to be written on your hard disk will not affect the older data already written to the track beside it. Since there's only a given number of tracks you can cram on a platter, this means that for larger capacity drives, you'll need more platters, making the drives heavier and more expensive to manufacture. SMR solves this. In an SMR drive, data is written one on top of the other. The data are overlapping, which means more track in a given platter size compared to its CMR counterpart. However, there is a trade-off for this. In order to write the new data, 
the old data is read, stored in the cache, erased, and then rewritten with the new data. Obviously, this process takes longer, especially when writing large data at once, something that NAS OS do when rebuilding a disk from parity. Rebuilding a 4 terabyte drive from a parity takes around 14 hours for CMR. And for SMR, it takes a whopping 9 days to complete the same process. With this in mind, I check on the type of Western Digital Reds I bought. They were indeed the ones that use SMR. What a bummer. Luckily, I haven't opened the disks yet because I was still waiting for the other parts to arrive and wanted to open them when doing the NAS build video. So I reached out to the seller and asked for the hard disks to be exchanged with the CMR model. Since the hard disks were still sealed, the seller agreed, but I have to wait for at least a week since they don't have it on stock. That's fine by me. If you are building a NAS of your own, avoid the hard disks that use SMR. For Western Digital, these are Western Digital Reds with capacities of 2 to 6 terabytes with model number ending in EFAX. To be fair with Western Digital, all manufacturers use this technology to allow bigger capacities with lesser platters. If you have this disk and use them normally as desktop hard disks, you don't need to worry. Desktop applications usually write data once and then just read from it. You may never notice the difference as these disks have larger cache, a telltale sign of SMR drives. How I ended up with the Chinese motherboard bundle? My first choice was FreeNAS since it was a free software. Hence, the parts I selected were parts that were required to run it. FreeNAS recommends using ECC memory. Both AMD and Intel platforms support ECC RAMs. I was eyeing an AMD Ryzen system originally. But during this build, we are still in general community quarantine and AMD parts were hard to come by. Since Intel also supports ECC memory, I went ahead with Intel. Another hurdle that I've encountered were the motherboards. It seems that ECC support are only available on workstation motherboards, which are darn expensive locally. But that was not the problem. The problem is the availability. I could not find one that's available locally. After reading that FreeNAS will run on regular memory and I do not need enterprise level data resiliency, I opted for an ASUS Prime B365M-A motherboard and 32 gigs of G-Skill RIP JOS memory. Because of the hard disk troubles I had mentioned, I had to wait for the drives to arrive to complete the parts and begin with the build. It was during this time that I came across the bundle of X79 Chinese motherboard, Intel Xeon 2620 CPU, and 16 gigs ECC memory, which was being offered by one of the online stores. As I was planning to use FreeNAS, I now have the opportunity to run ECC memory at a cheap cost, so I pulled the trigger. Note to self, get off the internet. Before we continue, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Click on the bell icon to be notified of my upcoming videos. Why I ended up with Unraid instead of FreeNAS Prior to building this PC, I've tested FreeNAS on a virtual machine on VirtualBox. This is for me to get a feel of how the system works and familiarize myself on its interface. After building this PC, I did some stress tests using Windows 10. While doing these tests, it occurred to me that during my free NAS testing on VirtualBox, I never tested how to expand the storage. I searched the net on how to do this so I can test this on my free NAS virtual machine. And this is what changed my mind. The very reason I chose free NAS was that compared to Android, it's free. But implementing CFS, free NAS's file system, isn't. Let's look at the CFS architecture. In a CFS, your disks are allocated together to create a VDEV. Once a VDEV is created, you cannot add hard disks to it unless you created a VDEV with a single hard disk and convert it to a mirror. 
This VDEV is then allocated to a C pool or CFS pool where your data will be written. CFS allows C pool to be expanded but in only two ways. 1. Replace your hard disks in a VDEV with larger capacity hard disks. 2. Add additional VDEV. Let's consider each option. If you have 4 by 4 terabyte hard disks in your original VDEV, to expand your storage capacity, you'll need to replace all 4 hard disks with 4 6 terabytes hard disk or larger, and they have to be identical. For option 2, let's say you just want to add a single hard disk. You can do this by creating a new VDEV with that one hard disk. Since this is only a single disk, there's no redundancy. If this fails, you lose all data written on this hard disk. Now, if the time comes and you wanted to add another one, you can either create a new VDEV using your new hard disk. Again, this is without redundancy. If you want to expand your storage and have redundancy, you'll need to create a new VDEV with at least two new hard disks. With these two new hard disks, only half of their total storage is usable because the other half is for redundancy. This means that every time you need to expand, you'll have to have two hard disks if you want redundancy. And considering the number of SATA ports that you have, this means that you need two SATA ports every time you wanted to add hard disks with, ha with redundancy. Now let's look at Unraid. Unraid uses RAID 5 and RAID 6. For RAID 5, you can have a single parity disk. If one of the drive fails, you can replace that disk and recover your data. RAID 6 has two parity drives. If you lose two drives, you can replace them and recover your data. In Unraid, you can add one hard disk at a time as long as it's not larger than the capacity of your parity drive. In both cases, you can add one hard disk at a time. You can even add hard disks of different capacities as long as it's not larger than the capacity of your parity drives. Hence, if the time comes that I need to add hard disks on my NAS, for free NAS, I will need at least two drives to have redundancy and can only use half of the total storage capacity for those two drives. Whereas for Unraid, I can buy the Pro license for the price of a single hard drive, which will enable me to expand my storage one disk at a time. In the long run, it's the most cost-effective solution for my need. After a few weeks of use, I had some minor upgrades on the budget NAS. I am now using a Seasonic Focus Plus Platinum 550 watts PSU. Since I'm building another rig from the original parts I had, I opted to pull out and use the Silverstone PSU installed on the NAS and replace it with a more efficient platinum rated PSU. I also replaced the original LED fan included in the Cooler Master Hyper 212 heatsink with ID Cooling XF12025 white LED fans for a push-pull setup and better thermals. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to write them on the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer them. I hope you've learned something from my last journey. Thank you for watching. Keep safe. Peace.